Hey guys, so welcome back to episode 2 of Fresh Build Fridays. So as I said in the last video, today we're going to be looking at the parallel coil. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail just in the opening here. I'm going to leave it for the up and close. But you're going to need exactly the same things as you needed in the first episode. So if you haven't seen the first episode, if you just click up here, uh, there should be a link to that episode. It'll go through all the basics, what tools you need and what wire we're going to be using. Today we're going to be using the same as last week's 22 gauge cantle uh, that's from the Crazy Wire Company. You can basically use any gauge of wire, any type of wire. The only thing that's going to vary is the ohmage. So additional wraps is going to bring the ohmage up. Taking off wraps is going to bring the ohmage back down. Um, so what we're shooting for today is seven wraps, which is technically going to look like 14 because we're going to parallel it. It's basically two strands of the same wire wrapped beside each other. Um, so it doubles, basically it will double the surface area of the coil, uh, but same amount of wraps, just two bars. Uh, we'll bring the, the homage down, uh, but we'll get a look at it in more detail in the up and close. So hopefully you have your coil master kits ready or your tools and we'll jump straight in. Okay guys, so this is the parallel coil. Now, basically what this is, we're gonna take two strands, same length from the spool. Uh, in this case, we're using the 22 gauge cantle. Hopefully you can see there. And we're gonna wrap them the same way we wrapped the basic coil in the last episode, but we're gonna wrap two lengths of wire at the same time. Uh, this is going to give us more surface area, it's going to drop the ohmage and it's going to give you more of a ramp up time and a lot more cloud production, more flavour, a bit more heat uh, but we'll jump into it here. So all we're going to need today is the same kit as last time only with the addition of another set of needle nose pliers. Now you can use the Coilmaster brand at once, as you can see I've had these for quite a while, starting to rust slightly. Um, or you can use the likes of the bigger ones that you would find in your tool kits at home. Uh, I prefer these ones just because there's more of a grip on them. Um, but we'll get started and we'll take off some of the wire here. So we're going to shoot for a dual coil, 7 wraps or 8 wraps if you count half wraps if you don't. So all I'm going to do, the easiest way to do it, rather than trying to measure one piece of wire against another, we're going to take off a double amount. So I would say, yeah, right about that. So that's three rotations of this spool. And we'll take our snips and we'll cut it off there and set the wire to the side. So you've got your piece of wire, what do you do next? All I do when I make is just bring them together just like that and we'll take our needle nose pliers, find the middle and just sort of make a point. Now we want to get this as close together as we can, it just makes it a lot easier when wrapping the coils. So as you can see there, 22 gauge is quite tough. So if you just take your needle nose pliers and just gently squeeze it together just to get it close just like that as you can see so don't worry about these sides what you can do you can straighten the wire beforehand um, or you can wrap it like this straightening the wire does make it a lot easier so we'll leave that one to the side for a second we'll go through the straightening process so all I do to straighten the wire just take off your spool so we're wanting three rotations same length again and we'll snip off there okay there are so many different ways of straightening wire and um, the most popular one would be using a cordless drill or a corded drill just anything with an adjustable chuck such as this so what we do with the drill just unscrew the chuck and we want to put a 90 degree bend just in the wire. 
just like that. Just gives the chuck something to hold on to. And we'll place that in the chuck just with that 90 degree bend caught between two of the teeth. So if you're going to go down this route guys, just make sure that it is clamped down. And we'll take our pliers and we'll hold the other end of the wire. So we've got one end in the chuck of the drill and we're just holding the other end with the needle nose pliers. Now what I like to do just to make sure I've got a good amount of grip on it is just rotate it slightly just so it's wrapped around one leg of the pliers and it doesn't really matter what way you spin the wire guys um, just spin it a few seconds maybe three to four maybe five seconds just to make sure that all that spring has been taken out okay and there we go nice and straight so we'll just clip off that side put the drill out of the way and we'll clip off the other end just to make it nice and tidy there we go so now we've got this straight piece of wire now you can either bend it in half just to find the middle or you can measure it out to make sure you've got two halves just for the sake of the video guys I'm just going to bend it in half here and just gently squeeze it together to find the middle okay and we've got the point and we'll just take our needle nose pliers same process as before and we'll just gently squeeze that together and the same process applies no matter what gauge you're using it just does make things a lot easier so we are going to be working with the precision screwdrivers today just these boys here and we've got the three mil screwdriver there okay so we're going to shoot for seven wraps so that's seven wraps if you count half wraps if you don't count half wraps it's going to be eight wraps it should come out to around 0.12, point one, you know, round about that area. It is going to be a lot lower in the ohmage. For example, if the ohm reading of a single coil is 0.4, if you add another identical coil to that, it's going to half the resistance, which will bring it down to 0.2. The same thing applies here. If you're wrapping a single piece of wire and your build comes out to 0.2, if you're wrapping a parallel, you're kind of wrapping two coils together to make one coil so because that's two coils together it's going to half the ohmage which is going to bring it down to point 0.1 hopefully that makes sense so same process you can use the coil jigs for this guys I just find it a lot easier with the screwdrivers so we're going to butt it up just to the end of the screwdriver and we're going to wrap so we've got half one and a half and you want these wraps to be as close together as possible don't worry if there's a slight bit of slack I'll show you in a few seconds just how to fix that so it's one and a half two and a half three and a half four and a half five and a half six and a half and seven so here we go now you can see there are a few bumps just at the very top there so what we're going to do we're going to clip the legs just on this just to make it a bit more manageable okay and we're going to take our needle nose pliers and we're going to grab one of the legs and while holding the coil tightly we're going to pull down just like so and we'll do the same with the other leg and you'll see that they'll sort of bounce back in the same place. So you can see that that's a good bit tidier. It's not as tidy as I would like. So what I'm going to do, take the coil off and turn it around. 
just to give me a bit more room. And we're going to grab this side and we'll do the same. Just to try and get it as tidy as possible. Don't worry if it's not perfect guys. We can sort of we can work around it and we will get there. So with this end, because it is quite difficult to pull an individual egg because it's joined, all we're going to do here is snip the end of it so it'll give us two individual eggs. So we'll take the outside one first, give it a tug, and the same with the inside leg. There we go. There we are. That's a lot tidier. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So we'll set that one to the side. Okay, so there we go. That's the second one wrapped. Same process as before. We'll just clip off the end just where it joins. As you can see, there is one of the wraps there that has, it's just not as tight as the rest of them. So same process. We'll clip off the legs of the longest piece just to make it a bit more manageable. Go. And we'll take our needle nose pliers and we'll grab the outside leg, holding the coil nice and firmly, and we'll tug down. And same with the inside leg. You'll feel when you've stretched enough, um, it, there's like a barrier that it won't let you pass, which is good because you know that you've stretched it enough. So we'll take the coil off, turn it around. Just a bit more manageable and we'll take the outside coil holding the coil firmly again and tug down and same with the inside coil and there we go we'll just push it up against the end there using our pliers just with 22 gauge being that bit firmer so we've got our coils, there we go. So what are we going to put them in? Now with the parallel, if you're going to be using 22 gauge, there is a lot of surface area there. So we're going to need something that this fits into. So something like a 22 mil RDA is going to be too small. So we're going to look at the bigger ones. So let me see what we have. Okay, so what we're going to work with today, guys, just because the coils are that extra bit wide, just being the 22 gauge to make it a bit easier to see in the video, we're going to be using the Twisted Mess's 30mm, as you can see here. So the reason why I'm using this, it's a 30mm RDA. Um, just in case you're wondering why this screw is nearly hitting the roof compared to the others, um, these grub screws... I touched on it a bit in the last video and um, they are a pain in the ass when it comes to stripping um, just being the hex key as you can see on top there hopefully they do strip so easily um, so this one's slightly longer but it's not going to affect the performance of the RDA so if you're going to be using the likes of 26 gauge or 28 gauge wrapping your parallel coils is going to take up a lot less room because the wire itself is a lot thinner which will make the coil not as wide so we'll go ahead and we'll mount the coils in this i have it sitting on top of the vapor storm puma one of my favorite mods at the minute and um, we'll mount the coils here then we'll transfer it onto the ohms reader and we'll check out what the ohmage is before heat set so one thing i want to mention guys this as you can see all the post holes are level so with the previous video when we were building in the tsunami rda um, same sort of setup we've got two posts which is referred to as the velocity style deck the only difference is instead of the post holes being vertical they're horizontal so what i like to do with coils for atomizers like this is if you just take your needle nose pliers just by the tip there Hold both the legs in this case and we'll give it a 90 degree bend and we'll just bring the other side of the coil around the level. Now what this does, it allows us to get the coil in nice and straight rather than having to fight against it and bend the coil out of shape. With the parallel coil 
you want to make sure that your legs are in flat. You don't want them to cross. You don't want them to cross over, or start to twist, as you're going to have problems with shorten. So, just looking in at the atomizer here, um, just have a look, quick look at the anatomy. We've got two posts that are negative on this side, which is milled into the deck. And we've got our positive on this side. Now, to help distinguish which post is which. If you look down at the very bottom, you can see the peak insulator just round the top of the 510 pin. And you can see that that peak insulator separates it from the rest of the deck. So that's how we know which one we're at. So we're going to start the right hand side of the coil going to the negative and the left hand side of the coil going to the positive. So we want it in, just leave a slight bit of gap there and it'll give us room to play with. We're going to take our best friend in the coil master toolkit which is the triple key and just going to tighten this up remember don't over tighten it as we don't want it to strip those leads and snap them so we just want to tighten down enough and I can already feel that these grub screws are starting to strip but we're nice and tight there and same with the positive side I apologize keep hitting the camera <laughs> just giving you a bit of motion sickness so there we go so all I like to do at this point is just pull it out slightly just to make sure that we're nice and we've got the tension on it and just pop it slightly over to the middle and there we go that's the first one installed I'll just give these an extra bit of a tighten just because they are starting to strip it is quite hard just to make sure that they're tight enough. There we go. So we'll take our flush cuts, butt it up against the post. And remember to watch your eyes when you snip them and that gets them nice and tight against. Keeps them nice and tidy. So I do apologize if you can hear my dog barking in the background. Um, so again, what we're doing just taking the tip of the needle nose pliers right up against the coil and we're giving it a 90 degree bend just out the way and we'll bring the other side of the coil the legs on that side just level with it so I'm just going to cut off that side um, just to make it a bit easier and we'll put this in the corresponding post holes so don't worry at this point as you can see the coil legs on the left hand side if I push it right in it is going to touch the coil we're going to snip those but we do like to leave just a bit of a gap there and we'll take our tri tool and we'll tighten it down especially the skyscraper one <laughs> it's actually from the twisted messes RDA version one um, same diameter of grub screws, just not the same height. And we'll make sure we're nice and tight there. There we go. And same again, we'll give it a bit of a tug just gently. And we'll bring it over to the side. Okay, here we go. Nice and neat. So this one's a good bit easier. Uh, to snip the legs uh, of the coil just below the coil the opposite coil there and um, just because there is a bit more room so we'll just put our flush cuts in and we'll snip same on the other side and there we go nice and tidy so we'll pop this off the mod throw it onto our ohm reader and we'll see what it reads okay so we've got it on our ohm reader and we'll move it to the meter side it's coil master 521 mini tab and as you can see before pre-fire it's reading 0.13 pop it over to fire and we'll take our ceramic tweezers and we're just going to pulse the coil just to get it glowing up nice and we'll, we'll use our ceramic tweezers just to make sure that we have no hot spots or anything like that Okay guys, I've just transferred the RDA onto my mod here, uh, onto the Puma. The reason for it, it's reading 0.2. Uh, 
as you can see there. And sometimes with the coil master tab, once you go over a certain ohmage, it just it kind of struggles a bit. It's good for low builds around 0 0.1, 0 0.12, uh, but once you move up in the 0.2, it does struggle a bit. So because I know it's in the safe zone, that's why I've moved it to the mod here. So I have it set at 70 watts. Um, we're just pulsing like we would on the tab, and we're just looking to get the coils glowing evenly from the inside out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to wick it up and juice it up and we'll take a vape on it. Okay, so just working this RDA in particular guys, it's really the same process as before, just pull it down to the bottom of the deck, slightly up, and snip. Down to the bottom of the deck, slightly up, and snip. And we can take these sides, cut them to the same length, just as so, and we'll take our angle tweezers, just give it a slight brush, just to take those knots out. Um, what we're going to do is tuck it underneath the coil and to one side. Now, because this is such a big RDA, there is a huge gap in the middle of it, just as you can see, hopefully, there. And what I like to do, just to help with juice flow, is just to take another sort of scrap piece of cotton, just like so, fold it in half, and all we're going to do is post this through the middle, just like so, and we'll tuck it in. It just gives a bit of a bed at the bottom of the RDA, just to help control the juice. What I've found with this particular RDA is even though it will hold quite a bit of juice, it's also prone to leaking without sort of that bed in the center. So just looking from the top down, as you can see, if you're going to be dripping through the drip tip, there's plenty of cotton there to soak up the juice. So what juice are we using today? We're going to be using some of King's Custard cinnamon flavor. I think I touched on it in the last video guys, there is a review coming of the full range, it should be out in the next few days. So all we're doing is just wetting the coils over the top and just painting the sides of the cotton down, just to make sure it's properly saturated. Nothing worse than a dry head. And the last side. And because we put that bed of cotton in the middle, what I like to do is just go to the middle of the RDA and a big splooge, straight down the middle. So we're at 70 watts. Just a bit more juice just to make sure we've got the center of the coils saturated. There we go, nice and cloudy. Nice. So, that was the parallel build using 22 gauge Canthal in the Twisted Mess's 30mm RDA sitting on top of the Vaporstorm Puma. And just before anyone mentions, yes, I know my batteries are nearly done. I have the rest of them on the charge. Um, I thought they would have been ready, but unfortunately they're not. But we've still got plenty of life to make sure we get a couple of vapes off this. So we'll take it back up to the main camera, have a vape on it, just so you can see the cloud production that comes from the parallel coil. 
So guys, that was the parallel build using the 22 gauge cantle. Fantastic, easy build that to me is the next progression level from the first video, which is just your standard coil build. Um, the surface area on this does give quite a warm vape compared to a single wrap. Um, but if you're into your warm vapes, and I know a lot of people are, this is definitely going to be for you. Absolutely shit ton of clouds. And just to reiterate guys, I am on King's Custard Cinnamon Flavour. Really, really nice juice. Full review coming soon. But the cloud production, flavour, it's another smack in the face. Loads and loads of flavour from this. Clouds for days. Um, it is, as I said, slightly warmer than your average vape. Um, I'm not a big fan of the warm vapes, but if it's something you're into, you're going to love it. Super, super easy to build. And with that extra space, sort of the surface area on the coil, it's going to produce a hell of a lot more vapour, as, as you can see. So, that was episode two in the series of Fresh Build Fridays. This one is actually going to be on Friday, unlike last week, <laughs> we're on Saturday, uh, but we'll say no more on that one. So if you have any questions, guys, leave them in the comments below, and I'll certainly do my best to answer them. Next week's episode, we are going to be moving into the Claptons. Now, this is where the coil building starts to take over your soul, <laughs> takes over all your free time. It's so much more fun once you move into the Clapton style of coils. So... What you're going to need for next week is, again, exactly the same as what we're going to do here. Only next week I'm going to be using 26 gauge and we're going to be working with NI80. It doesn't matter what type of wire you want to use, the premise is always the same. But the additional thing we're going to need for next week, we're going to need a drill and we're going to need some wrap wire. Now you can either use the likes of 32 gauge, 34, 36, 38, 40. The choice is yours. Just if you're beginning to make clappings for the first time, try and go for something like 32 gauge or 34 gauge. Again, it doesn't matter which wire type you're using. I'm just going to be working with Nichromaty, um, as it's just a personal preference of mine. So that's all you're going to need for next week, and we're going to look at the clapton. So I will leave it there, guys. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon just to make sure that you get your notification when the next episode is ready. Hopefully this has been informative for you guys and hopefully it's helping to fill in a few blanks and a few questions that you might have regarding coil building. And as I said, we're going to continually get more difficult and more difficult as the weeks go on. So yeah, we'll leave it there and I will see you again next Friday.